Hey guys, welcome back. Taft Hardington here. Today we're going to do the Hunter itemization. I uh, just want to go over some of the assumptions we make. For purposes of consistency, we assume that it is better to stat stack as opposed to stat smooth. This is situational and depends on your set as a whole. All items are best in slot and we list them in order of preference. So for example with the helm, lucky fishing hat would be our number one preferred item and uh, we go down from there to the bottom item would be the least preferred. Um, we assume that armor values and uniqueness are accurate on the classic DB, for the most part they are. I haven't found a situation in which it isn't. Um, and the items are listed in in-game order, so this is in the order uh, without any sort of phasing or patches into consideration. So these stay relevant uh, regardless of which patch it is. So for the helm, we start out lucky fishing hat, obviously. This will come out with ZG. This is fished up from the fishing tournament in STV. Sundays at noon. Very cool looking 15 stamina. And we would enchant that with either the Constitution Libram, 100 health, or we could go 8 agility, Arcanium of Ferocity. Uh, and these are not unique, so you could double up on, you could get two fishing hats, one for your stam set and one for your agility set um, but until that point until we catch that hat we're going to be using the green tinted goggles from 150 engineering eight stam seven spirit and likewise we will either go with the libram of constitution or the veracity or we will just get two of these helms and uh, go one with 100 health and one with eight agility and uh, third option for Horde would be the Hooded Cowl. This is, you get this from the Dangerous Quest at level 19. It's a very simple quest. And for Hunter, you would be doing this alongside the Battle for Hillsbrad quest because these, um, the, the, the mobs that you have to kill coincide with the Battle of Hillsbrad mobs. And both of those are going to be at level 19 and you're going to want a lot of uh, XP uh, open for 19 to soak both the hooded cow from dangerous and the battle for Hillsbride quest and we just put the arcanium of resilience on it 25 resist I mean but you could put anything on it really uh, we just felt that the fire resist would be the most um, just kind of would, would fit it would fit that helm for necklace, uh, same as every other class, we start off with the tarnished silver necklace. It gives no stats. It's just there for aesthetics. Same with the voice amplification modulator, just there for aesthetics. And then eventually, once we are honored with Warsong Gulch, we'll go scouts or sentinels medallion, depending on Horde or Alliance. Six agility, two stamina. This is massive for Hunter. Uh, it's the only neck with any stats on it. The max out of all this. Yeah. For shoulders, there's only only two two options that you'd be using. Talbar mantle, obviously three stam, six int, um, big pickup. It's the only one with relevant stats for hunter, and this comes from the glowing shard quest that uh, or the glowing shard that drops off the murloc boss at the end of Wailing Caverns which will give you the end nightmares quest to get that mantle and then we, we pair that with the fortitude of the scourge 16 stam 100 armor this drops off of uh, Sephiron second to last boss in Nax and um, if you're able to get the Midas scourge 20 attack power 1% uh, crit we would put that on scouting Spalders uh, just so that you have a second pair or really whatever leather shoulders that you enjoy the aesthetic of we would say put it on put it on those 
Uh, but this is only if you get two if you get two of the Nax enchants, which most people won't. But so if you're only going to get the Midas Scourge, then put it on Tau Bar. Um, but if you get two, then then you'd want obviously some some white shoulders to go for the second one. For the cloak, sentry cloak, very straightforward. It's uh, it's so big, five stam, four agility. It's a BOE. Pick it up on the auction house right now. They've actually had a price drop. Now they're selling for like 35 gold, which is a steal, in my opinion. And you want to enchant that with five all resistances. This is the only PvP oriented cloak enchant, and it's also one of the only places that you can even pick up resistance at 19. So, um, and you, you can get two of them. And uh, we have the stealth enchant, and I'm curious to know whether or not that's gonna, how that's gonna play. Now this comes out with AQ, so. It's not like right away. <clears throat> it's also a very expensive enchant. And I would like to know if anyone can test this on, on their Night Elf to see does this stealth enchant apply to Shadow Melt. But um, another option is Engineer's Cloak. Five stamp, two intellect. If you wanted more uh, int as opposed to Agi or if you just didn't have the gold you just want to make a budget tune and you didn't want to spend the the money on Sentry Cloak you can go Engineers is from the questline Ziz Physics which starts in Ratchet right next to the Flight Master and that's a great pickup if if you don't have the gold for a Sentry Cloak and we would also enchant that with plus five all resistances and then our third option would be our Glowing Lizard Scale Cloak and this is if you wanted just like a pure agi build cloak and enchant that with three agility so you'd end up with nine agility on this cloak would be um, five more agility than what you would have with a, a sentry cloak with greater resistance we move to chest now alliance definitely have the benefit here with the tunic of westfall five stam eleven agility this starts from, or you get this from the Defias Brotherhood quest chain. Starts at level 14, um, from from Grayen Stout Mantle, there in Sentinel Hill, Hill. I think it's like the main quest line of Sentinel Hill. Um, but again, I'm not an Alliance buff, but uh, this is a very easy quest to do. Really big chess piece for Hunter, and I would enchant that with greater stats. That's for all, for all to stats to chest. It's a fairly expensive chest piece, but it's definitely the one I would go um, if I were if I were to get the the, the chest piece because this is going to be your sort of agi agi stack chest. I w the reason I wouldn't go a hundred a hundred health to that chest is because if you want to if you want to stam set then you would go get the Black and Defias armor off of Van Cleef, which you, you can tell you're definitely taking a big hit there in agility, but um, but you're picking up a lot more, so you're picking up six more stam, and you're also picking up four strength. And for whenever you think about sort of the theory of like a, a stam stack, Hunter, you're going to be thinking of, you're doing a lot more up close and personal melee combat, so it would make more sense to go with the with that less agility, more strength, and more stam, and enchant that with with a hundred health. Now for horde, you can just get two black and defias armors, and enchant one with greater stats and the other with major health. For bracers. There are the 3-3 three, three Wrangler of the Monkey. These are going to be kind of hard to find. Um, and they're going to be pretty expensive when you do find them. But until that point, you can always just have Forest Leather Bracers. If I want to load. You can always get Forest Leather Bracers off the auction house for pretty cheap. They shouldn't be any more than 3 gold for these. 5 agility. Really straightforward. 
and if whenever you do have forest leather always go superior stam and same with the monkey bracers superior stam there is an option to go one agility enchant to bracers but I can't ever see that being worth it whenever you have nine stam and the nine stam and Shane, if we look at it, it's really not expensive. 15 illusion dust, that's nothing. <clears throat> so, really no reason not to get it. And you can also get a second pair of bracers to go mana regen if you wanted to. Um, it's really expensive, but it would be in line with a, you know, just like a pure a DPS build. I would say this mana regen is going to end up being a lot more DPS than like the nine or the the one agility enchant to bracers because a lot of your dps as a hunter is going to come from the amount of mana you have so we do show that there gloves kind of the same situation with the bracers there's scouting gloves the monkey four four these are going to be kind of difficult to find but not nearly as difficult as the three three wranglers um, and you can also go scouting gloves of the falcon 4-4 for, for horde there is so if you don't want to spend the money you want to make a budget tune for horde there is another option um we don't show it there because it's simply it's not bis but it is an option gloves of the moon this is a pretty long quest chain in the barons um it's really simple though it's not like this looks like a lot of work going on over here um it starts with the plane sh the plane shatter menace i'm sure if you've ever leveled a sword you've done this this quest and then like the zebra hooves uh the prowlers and it's all the way down to and now if you're going to do this quest as horde just finish it out and go all the way down to isha walk you pick up the five five belt um of course you don't have to but uh, you, you might as well if you're gonna if you're gonna do it because you you can complete it well before level 19, well before any of this. Uh, and if you're making a budget tune, you might as well um, just go through, get those three three gloves, and then and then finish it and get the, the that five five belt beastmaster's girdle. So that is an option for horde. Uh, if you're Alliance, you pretty much got to, you're just going to have to go with either the Scouting Gloves of the Monkey or the Scouting Gloves of the Falcon. Um, and right now you would just go, oh sorry, that is not the enchant I wanted, the pre-AQ enchant, which is 7 agility. Um, once AQ is out, you can go get your 15 agility enchant. Now, I guess there is an option um for alliance if you're doing a budget tune and i know a lot of people like to make a hunter like a budget hunter because they're very easy to make and you would end up using let me see i believe it's called serpents it's serpent gloves off of the um the jim morrison reference boss for agility for intellect cloth i mean it is an option if you didn't want to buy the other gloves the, the scouting gloves but you would also go seven agility um, for the belt there's only one option for alliance and that's the deviant scale belt this is a crafted item from leather working six six stamina five agility three spirit really big stats um, you get this on the auction house or, or craft it as a leather worker um, and then Horde, there's also the Screecher Belt, which is an option that's from Blood Fury Bloodline Quest. And I believe it starts at either 16 or 17. I believe it's 17 then it starts. But you can see 5 Intellect, 3 Stamina, 2 Spirit, 12 Attack Power. And uh, it starts with Harpy's Threaten. It's showing level 18, but I believe it starts at 17. Um, there in, in, in Sunrock Retreat in Stonetown Mountains. That's also a good. And then you also have the other belt we, we showed. Um, it was that 5-5 five, five belt. Now I can't remember. Beastmaster's Girdle. Was it Beastmaster? No. Let's just see. Beastmaster's. 
the girdle. So that, that's another option for Horde. So Horde has a lot of options whenever it comes to to making a uh, a budget tune hunter. Legs. <laughs> There's only one option, and this is for like a lot of melee um, or like physical damage classes. Legs of the Fang. Nothing ever comes remotely close to these. Five strength, four stamina, nine agility. Um, nine agility, that's just so big. There's only this. This is literally the only option. Um, and take note of that two set because it's going to become kind of relevant whenever we get down to the boots. Um, and I bust up kind of a common misconception about making a hunter at 19. But Langs of the Fang, literally the only option. Nothing, nothing comes remotely close. And the same thing with the legs as with the helm. We're either going to enchant it with 100 HP, the Constitution Libram, or we're going to enchant it with 8 Agility, the Ferocity Libram. Now for for feet, your best option is going to be your Nat Paglin Extreme Angling Boots, 12 stamina. Really, really big. This is the comes from the same place that the fishing hat comes from, the SDV fishing tournament. Uh, whenever the ZG patch comes in every Sunday at noon, you fish those up. And you can get two of them. And um, I guess we can just go ahead and, and say and say why why we're showing greater stamina here. Seven stam. Because let me back up. You're almost always going to want minor run. Um, you don't have mounts. The only really moving, uh, like improvement effects is going to be either like sprint for rogue, or for everyone else like a swiftness potion, and then for horde the the blood shard movement. But you have to go minor run speed because it's I. It's kind of hard for me to describe like just how important this is. This is, if you were to only get one enchant, this would be the enchant you would get. Um, you just always fall behind in 19 games if you don't have minor run. You have to have minor run, like above anything else. I mean, like if I make a level 10, um, and I just go in to do like games on a level 10, and I have literally no gear. I'll always go in with minor run because arguably like that's all you really need uh, minor run but we show the greater stam here the seven stam to be stacked with the the Nat Paggles extreme England boots now you can also do greater agility and that's why you see we've, we've coupled greater agility here with feet of the links but the reason we show the greater stam is because when the ZG patch comes out and We'll have to see whether or not, now we should be able to um, soak the Heart of Hakar buff that should persist through death up until the Nax patch. Once Nax patch comes in, it should no longer persist through death. But there's going to be like a four month period where the ZG buff will persist through death. And that's going to give you, I believe it's either 10 or 15, okay, I believe it's 15% movement speed with 10% to stats. So it'll override the minor run speed enchant. And so there won't be any point of having a minor run speed enchant whenever you have the heart of a car buff. So you would want something like greater stamina on your Nat Pagla's extreme Anglin boots or greater agility on something like Feet of the Lynx. Or you could stat smooth where you get like greater agility on Nat Paggles or, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the whole ZG um, buff spiel and why we show the greater stamina there and the greater agility on Feet of the Lynx. Uh, but that is that is for the ZG patch. But until then, for Horde, Trailblazer boots, so big, three stamina, seven agility, this comes from the Horde Presence quest, which comes from the, you've seen the four pack Alliance elites sort of walking around in the Barrens, um, in the Southern Barrens area, um, which, uh, Swift River.
Arena Swift River, it's not showing that that's who it drops up, but that's who it drops off of the rune scroll. Well, let's see. It should say it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I, I, and I guess it's Swift River drops the rune scroll, which starts the quest that gives us the Trailblazer boots, 7 agility, 3 stamina. Really the best thing for Horde. Um, and obviously minor run on that. And then there's Footpads of the Fang, and this is kind of big why we're showing Footpads of the Fang here above Feet of the Lynx. Now, a lot of people go Feet of the Lynx on Hunter, and I'm sorry, I don't think that's right. I think it's correct if you have the ZG buff and you've enchanted it with greater agility. I don't think it's correct, and it is for much more I'm speaking towards Alliance here. Um... And you could you could wear this if you wanted to the feet of the links, um, but and the argument's actually kind of strong for rogue on alliance. But footpads of the fang. Now remember that two set I was telling you about earlier with the leggings, because you're always going to be wearing leggings of the fang. This two set increases damage by nature spells and effects by seven. Is actually kind of big because. You're using a lot of serpent stings, and I believe this increases the amount of damage done by that by, um, well, it should be seven damage, um, not every tick, but in total. So I think you get like one damage extra on the tick, but where it becomes even bigger, and this wasn't the case on private servers, but it is big, is it when you're proccing Venom Strike. So if you're using Venom Strike, then I would say, hands down, Footpads of the Fang, get that two set bonus, the seven damage, it should be applying to this proc, and also your, your Serpent Sting. Um, because on the private servers, this this equip, chance, chance to hit range targets, um, wasn't proccing like it is here. So, but other than that, Let's consider just if assume like this didn't even have the set bonus, and we were only looking at the stats for stamina, for agility versus eight agility, three strength. The reason why footpads of the fang are better on stat only, you know, consideration is because you're dropping. The 8 agility to 4 agility. So you're sacrificing 4 agility for 4 stamina. And anyone who knows PvP will tell you the number one. Damn microphone went out. The number one stat in PvP is stamina across all classes. Um, so you're basically trading 4 agility for four stamina, you're get, you're also giving up three strength, but it's really a non-issue for Hunter because strength only comes into play with a Raptor Strike. Um, and if that's your argument, then then it's kind of self-defeating because why would you be agi stacking and strength stacking? Like it's kind of you know counterintuitive. But yeah, basically on, on that alone, you're, you're pretty much only using the, the 8 agility. And here you're trading 4 agility for 4 stamina, and stamina is always considered a higher, a more important stat in PvP than anything else regardless of class. So, on a, on a stat only consideration, Footpads of the Fang are better for Hunter, unless you're Horde. And you're using Trailblazer boots, right? But um, for Alliance, I would never really go Feet of the Lynx unless you're going crazy for the Heart of Hakkar buff and you've got those enchanted with agility and you're just rocking a ridiculous amount of agility for boots. Um, and then another option. So we show the Grizzled boots here for Horde. It should be seven, seven stamina, two strength. Um, 
and then we show the strength or the sorry the stamina enchant with that that would be sort of your placeholder for nat paggles so if whenever the, like the zg patch comes out and you don't have your nat paggles and you still want a stam stack boot you would you could use the grizzled boots which would be your best option um, now for alliance if you wanted like stam stack i would go with this because there is no uniqueness on footpads of the fang and you could get like two of these one with minor run and, and, and then one with stam um, if you wanted like stam stack boots for the zg patch before you have nat paglas and of course we always show the rockin or the goblin the rockin the goblin rocket boots with minor speed uh, pretty much always have those uh, okay for rings again it's sort of the same case with with every class that you'll see um, you've got your seal rings for your seal of sylvanas for horde your seal of Rune for alliance and then your your war song reward ring um, and those are kind of like the two two top options but i'll go through it seal of sylvanas level 18 arugal must die eight stamina three strength again you're not really using the strength but eight stam is so outlandish that uh you pretty much always going to be wearing it for alliance seal of Rin, a very long quest chain you need to start it as early as possible so whenever you're level 10 um, it starts uh, off the unsent letter let's see if we can just go get get to it the unsent letter there it is which starts which drops off of Van Cleef so once you're level 10 go straight into um, dead mines and go get your items and this is one of the items I believe it's a hundred percent chance to drop uh, the unsent letter which starts this this whole this whole quest chain which you want to get done like as soon as you can because it ends up being a lot of XP and the ring is actually really really big for hunter you can see four stam three spirit three agility three strength four and ridiculous now this is its final version you can see right here it says 1.9 because that is the 1.9 version the 1.2 version is two stamina six spirit but regardless you still want to pick it up as early as possible because it eventually gets upgraded to this and that'll that's going to be your best ring that you can be wearing and I don't know um, whether or not Blizzard has this in its fully upgraded state already I would assume so since it's 112 uh, 112 uh, itemization <clears throat> And another option for ring is blood ring, uh, which is five stamina. And then obviously you can see meta ring of agility, five agility. You know, these are just sort of, if you want to go like a stam stack, you could wear like seal of Sylvanas and blood ring or seal of Rin and blood ring. Or if you want to go agi stack, same deal, but with the meta ring of agility, five agility. Um, and then the meta ring of the monkey 3-3 this is going to be very rare or fairly hard to find and you could do the same with um, of the falcon you know 3 agility 3 intellect uh, but those are going to be kind of rare and, and a bit more expensive um, and then we have the legionnaires or protectors ban which is 4 agility 2 stamina it also has 4 strength on it that's from uh, Honored. I believe that's Honored with Warsong. Uh, but our other option here is the Lavishly Jeweled Ring, six intellect, three agility, or two agility. I'm a really, really big fan of this ring. This drops off of uh, Gillen in the Dead Mines, the, the Goblin in the Foundry. Six int, two agility. Huge fan of this as like a starter. Uh, ring for uh, for for a hunter. I think a lot of people downplay it, but to me, that's so much damage right there coming from the int in that that agility. Because like I said, a lot of your damage is going to come from your mana as a hunter. Now a lot's going to come from agility, like pretty much the majority. But 
you know, your ability to constantly multi-shot, your ability to constantly uh, wing clip and concussive, like all of that pulls from mana. So I really, really <clears throat> like that. So like starting out on Horde, I would I would pretty much rock Seal Sylvanas and Lavishly Jeweled until I could get my Legionnaires. Same thing with Alliance, I would go Seal of Rin and Lavishly Jeweled. Um, usually because whenever I'm on Alliance, I'm doing a budget tune. But uh, but you could also go Seal of Rin and Five Agility or Seal of Rin three three. Until you get the either protectors or legionnaires, which is going to be better than your meadow ring. So for trinkets, AGM obviously uh, the trinkets are going to be the same for every class. There's only three: your insignia, your AGM, and your minor recombobulator. And basically, you just rotate whichever one's on cooldown. You rotate the one that's not on cooldown. And and I guess you could technically go, like, if everything's on cooldown, you could technically wear two AGMs just for the static one dodge that's on them, if you wanted to go that hardcore. So this is where it gets kind of tricky. Uh, <laughs> you can see we've kind of gone crazy here with the main hand. Um, and this is entirely dependent on whether or not you go get the Furbog Medicine Pouch which is honored with the Timbermaw hold. Um, now, the the on use doesn't work at 19, because Blizzard is completely clueless. They have no idea what they're doing with their game, so that's no longer on use. But you still have the option for the 10 stamina offhand, and all the other uh, fun offhand options that uh, that are available that you would sort of you know swap in and out so if you do go fur bogs we would basically suggest on horde wing blade this is from the leaders of the fang quest line which starts in the barons really early uh, let's go look where does it start Altered beings, the oasis one, you know, where you go and you got to go uh, test the dried seeds or no, you go like inspect uh, the northern pool and then you come back and then you go test the dried seeds and then you come back and they say go to kill the turtles and then it sends you to Hamal, Rune Totem, who then tells you to go to Nara and then who eventually gives you the quest leaders of the fang where you go collect the gems in of the willing caverns bosses and that gives you the wing blade five agility two stamina we're going to want to enchant that with 15 agility whenever it comes out and i believe 15 agility enchant is aq or sorry uh, bwl patch if you're alliance uh what you would have in in lieu of the wing blade would be assassin blade it's going to be fairly expensive but it's the thing that's that is most like it with four agility and you would get the 15 agility enchant on it um, for your one-hander fur bog and you can also get uh, shadow fang too if you wanted um I w almost would say shadow fang might be more advantageous um, so the idea behind now I'm like I said I'm I'm a horde main so this is kind of where the theory comes from, where we would use wing blade. So if we're using Furbog Medicine Pouch, we'd want a one-hander to use with that. We'd be using wing blade with 15 agility, and this is for when we're at ranged and we're sitting there. You know, we're multi-shotting, we're we're auto-shotting, yada yada. And then we need to go in for the wing clip. We don't want to be wing clipping with wing blade with 15 agility. We would swap to Shadow Fang with Fiery or Shadow Fang with Life Stealing to go in for the wing clips to get those procs and to hit a heck of a lot harder. Um, so there's a whole 10 damage extra on the on the top end with Shadow Fang with that chance on hit and then we'd have Fiery or something. So I, I can't stand these. I'm sorry. This is kind of a side track. It's 15 agility to Shadow Fang. Uh, what a waste of a Shadow Fang. My god. 
I mean, I guess, honestly, as a hunter, it would be kind of silly, but you could do that. You could go 15 agility, like for alliance, if you don't want to do the 15 agility on assassins, and you wanted, uh, you just was like, I'm just going to go Shadowfang, forget it. Um, I could see, but like, this is a rogue right here. And uh, who, whoever took this picture of whoever's rogue this is is an idiot. You, on a rogue, you you that's just so wasteful. You would never go 15 agility main hand on a rogue at 19. Um, but yeah, you see we got we got fiery weapon, steel weapon, chain, fiery blaze. I mean, those those two are just kind of silly. Uh, but like if you're going up against a warrior. Uh, and and you didn't want to get disarmed. You could you could have a shadow fang with steel weapon chain. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. But yeah, and then there's also like evocator's blade, and we show icy chill, and that's such a niche play that uh, I almost kind of don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> but but I was enlightened by um by Twink Boner. I don't you you all have probably seen him on XP off and in in the Twink uh, Discord, but he actually has icy chill and we always thought it was like him memeing around, but then, you know, after talking with him about it, there is actually a play for icy chill. In the event that you are trying to escape and are oom um, and you don't have the mana for a wing clip you would want icy chill <laughs> so it's like a very very niche play and you would want it on something like evocators which is a very very fast attack speed 1.6 um, and then we also kind of to go along with that meme we went ahead and added unholy weapon to just you know um, but in all honesty, you could do, you could go with, if you're going the one-hander, you could do an Evocator's Blade with 22 Intellect and, like, work through all that mana, you know. Um, and then, like, after you've used up the 22 Int plus, what is this, 4 Int? After you used up 26 Intellect worth of mana, then you would switch to your either Wing Blade or Assassin with Agility. And then you'd swap between those two between Shadow Fang and Assassins or Shadow Fang and Wing Blade um, for either ranged or melee attacking. So that's kind of the, the, the one-hander with offhand uh, weapon itemization. Now let's talk about what is more realistic for most people, which is going to be using two-handers. Um, and for the two-handers, our very best two-hander uh, is going to be your, uh, I believe it's honored, it could be, no, 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 it should be revered, yeah, the, the weapons are at revered, advisors gnarled for horde and the lore keepers for alliance, eight stamina, four intellect, three mp5, that three mp5 is really, really big, um, kind of what I've been saying about hunter is a lot of your damage comes from mana and you don't necessarily want to um, stack intellect because anywhere where you're stacking intellect you're basically trading that intellect um, you, you'd basically be trading agility for intellect and you don't really want to do that you really want to have agility over intellect that's why a mp5 um, and and that's kind of like why we showed with the bracers why we showed that mana region because the MP5 is really good, um, because you're not having to sacrifice agility, basically for for MP5, where you would be, if you were to have intellect, you would have to be sacrificing agility. So this would be your your number one two-hander, and so like two-hander, we still subscribe to the the whole swap. Uh, mechanic but um, so with that you know we for our swaps we would have our twisted chanters staff this is um, off the auction house it's a BOE 10 intellect 6 stamina we would want to enchant that with 
um, we want to enchant that with 22 int. Now you see here this picture. Whoever made this 19? Oh man, look at him. He's Alliance. He's wearing BDA. He doesn't have Talbar. He's wearing whatever those are. Those look like the Wailing Cavern gloves. He's not wearing Legends of the Fang. He's wearing um, scouting pants. Whoever whoever did this, another moron doesn't know what he's doing. But uh, So we would want Twisted Chanters with 22 intellect. Like I was saying with the evocators, the Twisted Chanters would be the sort of evocator equivalent for a two-hander with mighty intellect. 22 int on that. That's 22 int plus 10 times 1.5 times 10 480 that's 480 mana you would work through so you'd open with this right with 100% mana you would work through 480 mana with the, this two hander and then you could swap to a massive battle axe of the monkey 5-5 five, five, with the 25 agility enchant on it um, after you work through that mana Get, go into the massive battle axe of the monkey for your for your ranged attacks and then whenever you go in for your melee you would want to either swap into night reaver for like alliance or you could go runic dark blade for horde now let me just kind of pair these up for you so the twisted channer for two hander is the evocator equivalent for one hander the Massive Battle Axe of the Monkey, the 5-5, five, five, is the Wing Blade or Assassin's Blade equivalent for two-hander. And then your Night Reaver or Runic Dark Blade is your Shadow Fang equivalent for two-hander. Um, and we also show the Staff of Friar the, with Mighty Spirit on it. That's an auction house uh, item with Mighty Spirit. So for whenever you go oom, um, you, you would have that for out of combat region. Um, now, where do I want to take this? Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I guess it's like you would start out with Twisted Chanters, work through the mana, swap to your Agi, your Agi Axe, and then whenever you go in for melee, go Night Reaver. And then there would kind of be like an in-between, which would be your advisors with 25 agility. Um, now you could also go, once you have advisors, you could go in 8 agi, massive battle axe with 25, with, uh, with the 25 agility enchant on it. Um, but yeah. There's something else I want to say about this that I'm, that I'm forgetting right now, and I'm sorry. Um, I'll probably put it down in the comments once I remember. But I, I just want to keep this moving. So, your quivers. There's basically, Alliance gets this great option between these, uh, either Quiver of the Night Watch or Bandolier of the Night Watch. This is a quest out of um, whatever that dark and dusty place is called. I always forget the name. Duskwood. Yeah, yeah. Out of Darkshire. Nightwatch quest. Starts at level 18. But yeah. You reward you with this. With with one of these 11% uh, attack speed. Quiver or Bandolier. Um, if you're Horde, you're pretty much stuck with the Vendor. Uh, medium quiver or medium shot. Don't buy these off the auction house, by the way. Um, on the last server on Alliance, it was so funny. I made my money by simply buying these off of the uh, vendor and just reposting them to the auction house and people would buy. <laughs> That's how I made money on my budget hunter on Alliance uh, on the last server. So don't don't be that guy who goes and buys a vendor item off the auction house. Just find the vendor and buy it. Um, um, and now, also what I wanted to say about the scopes, Blizzard, again, clueless in what they're doing. 
this is the <laughs> so it's so funny you can't use the plus seven sniper scope on your weapon um, and and look at look at how ridiculous this is so let's pull up the sniper scope let me X out of this the plus seven requires level 40 right uh, but you would you would have someone who's like 60 or something you would give them the sniper scope and they would apply it to your weapon right well for whatever reason blizzard decided that this can't be used like this can't be applied um, to a 19 and so you have to use the accurate scope which is so stupid because it requires level 20 and I don't get like what's going on in in Blizzard headquarters where these types of stupid decisions are made but basically this is the best scope you can use and so far I haven't heard anyone um, you know I know a few guys who play Hunter a lot um, but none of them have tried applying Biznix one because you can see it's quite I mean it's really not that expensive the the delicate converters are kind of expensive but like well, overall it is kind of a pretty expensive thing to make but if you're gonna do it try try to apply it now there's a chance that it just won't apply since it says requires level 50 and the sniper scope you know requires level 40 but there is a chance that it can be applied and if it can be applied this is definitely what you want to go we tested it last server and we found that the 3% hit reduced the number of misses for both white and yellow attacks by half it, it halved the number of misses over I think we did like 500 uh, white hits and then like 200 something yellow hits and found that it reduced the the number of hits by half so I would definitely go go with that over over a scope over like the plus damage scope especially since the plus three is the best scope you can you can have that would be applied and I'm guessing it must be going off of item level and that's what it what it actually means whenever it says requires level I think it says require I think it means to say requires item level um, and not actual level because otherwise it wouldn't make sense that you could even apply the accurate scope since it's level 20 anyway on to the range weapons and you see it's kind of confusing how we have this with these three sort of different sections and that's because it depends what ammo you're using um, there's the feathered arrow and the exploding shot which comes from the quest and I believe it's Desolus um, that's rewarded so if you're using these shots then then this would be what we would consider to be um, the best options now let's sort of not look at that because um, these are these are like you can only get them off the auction house or sit next to the guy who who this quest turns in um, to, to get those let's say for for normal purpose what people are most always going to be using um, is little Timmy's with the crafted heavy shot this crafted heavy shot you can make it every 19 will be able to make this because it comes from the engineering crafted heavy shot one copper bar one uh, coarse blasting powder it adds 4.5 damage per second and if we look at the normal heavy shot we've got 3.5 and you can see the sharp arrow is also 3.5 damage so if you're using the heavy shot that's ex extra one DPS added which puts little Timmy's now let's compare these got little Timmy's we got 11 DPS so with the the heavy shot we're looking at 4.5 plus 11 that's 15.5 as opposed to what well, would be 14.5 with which is like the normal the normal ammo All right and then we get like the number one range attack on on horde range weapon on horde would be the bow of plunder this is from that dangerous quest the same quest that rewards hooded cow just kind of like why we put it there because if you're horde you need to go get the bow of plunder anyhow um, this is has the the highest top end at 39 but we got 11.3 DPS 
11.3 plus our 3.5 would be what? 14, 14.8. And like we said, 11.5 or 11 plus 4.5 is 15.5. So even then, uh, with, the, with the higher DPS weapon, even then little Timmy's with craft is going to be better than that. And it kind of goes down the line from there. The, you have the Warsong Bow, which is 11.7. Um, and like you're just going to end up getting this. And you can test and play around with it with, with whichever ones you, you enjoy to play with. But you'll get that at um, at Revered with Warsong. And we have we put the Venom Strike at the bottom. Um, this is because on the private servers, this equip chance on hit wasn't working like it is here um, but it is working on these servers and it might be better I haven't made a hunter yet uh, but I but I did get this weapon on uh, whenever I was leveling my uh, my warrior and I saw that the proc was working how it's supposed to work so this might actually end up being better um, I would just get I would just get all the weapons and test them out and then find out which one do I like the most. Um, but yeah, if you're using the vendor ammo, bow of plunder for horde is going to be better than little Timmy's. But if you use but if you have little Timmy's, always use the crafted heavy shot as opposed to the vendor ammo. And in which case, if you do, it'll be better than the bow of plunder. Um, now, it could be argued that for a troll, bow of plunder might end up being better than little Timmy's due to the crit uh, that you get from the extra bow skill, assuming you max it out. Um, but yeah, I would just get all all the weapons and test them out and see which one which one you like. There's also one other consideration with this is that little Timmy's makes a loud blast noise. So whereas the bow is basically silent, um, so that is something <coughs> to consider. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And um, I'm sure what whatever I was trying to think of to say about about the advisors, I'll think of it and put it in the comments. But yeah, catch you guys later.